Hi guys and welcome back to the channel. So today we're going to be taking a look at the Matek F7 flight controller. Now this F7 flight controller is a bit interesting. It's just because of its CPU what makes it super interesting. And it has a lot of features as well as speed. Now when people say that speed, you know, it's a lot faster. Let's put this into perspective what they mean by it's a lot faster. Uh, this CPU or microcontroller unit that's on this flight controller is as fast as the PlayStation 2 CPU. Yeah, pretty insane. So, for example, the PlayStation CPU runs around 294 megahertz to 299 megahertz. And this thing runs around 216 megahertz. Uh, once overclocked, it could run a lot faster. Now, a lot of you are not going to be overclocking it. And there's no need to overclock this one. So this is pretty much faster than the F4 flight controller by around, uh, I would say around 70 megahertz, which is pretty damn quick. This is just insanely fast. So the amount of processing power that this board has is just more than enough at the current moment of time. But in time, things will start to change again. Now, what makes the F7 microcontroller unit also so attractive is the fact that it has a lot more UARTs. I think it has up to seven UARTs, but to utilize seven UARTs on a board or to have the design, it's gonna take up a lot of space. So, but Maytag got away with setting up five UARTs. Now you might say, okay, well, I don't see an S bus pad. Well, this is what's so cool with the F7 flight controllers is they do have uh, inbuilt inverter so so they just invert you could put the s bus on any pin or you could put an i bus on any pin it'll figure out what it needs to do and it'll handle it so you can put inverted uninverted on any of the uart pads and you're going to be good to go that's it just set it up and you're good to go so let's talk about this flight controller now as you can see here it does have an osd which is a huge plus i mean all this processing power without an osd is really a waste so we do have a osd as you can tell right there and we have this little thing right here, and I believe this is the barometer. This is for things like altitude hold and all that kind of crazy stuff. This detects, you know, by the by the pressure of the air, what altitude you're on. And uh, if you set up, you know, something like altitude hold, it'll just hold its altitude. It'll, you know, bounce up and down every once in a while because, you know, you'd have to put some kind of... Um, not foam, but like fur to block the wind or the air rush that's coming from the propellers, which kind of ruins the air pressure and it kind of just makes it unstable. Now, I've never tested this before, so I really can't say, but this is used with a GPS to handle that. And what's so cool about this is they also give you the option to connect the GPS to this uh, via the SCL pads and the SDA pads right there. So if you wanted to connect the GPS, you can go ahead and do that on this flight controller. Now, it also has up to seven motor outputs. This thing has seven motor outputs, which is pretty insane. So like, for example, you ruined one or you're building a hexacopter or whatever. You have up to seven pads, which I really, really like on this uh, F7 flight controller from Maytag. And obviously, Maytag is quality. Now, one scary side, well, not well, it can be. Um, you know, when you put this on a build, make sure it's a quality build with quality ESCs because it is using a sensitive gyro. Now, the filtration has gotten a lot better with the new Betaflight uh, updates and releases. However, you know, you, 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 there's only so much it can do if there's a lot of electrical noise. For example, if you stuck a little B Summers on this guy, I don't think this guy, there's nowhere in hell this guy is going to fly unless you have like a trillion low ESR capacitors possibly. Now, you know, I'm over exaggerating here, but I'm just giving you an example. Now, let's check over the pads and how would we connect this if we wanted to connect it. So let's go ahead and start with this side here. So as you can see here, we do have a five volt pad and a ground and S7. This is for motor signal seven. If you are gonna need it, it's right there. You could also route it to whatever you want in the beta flight resources tab. All right, so let's go ahead and flip this board over. Now, as you can tell, there's the arrow right there. So when you're going to place this in your quadcopter, this would sit just like this in your quadcopter. So that's something to take note of here. And let's go ahead and take a look here. So we have ground, we have S3, which is motor three. So that's very nice because as you can tell here, this is the front and, you know, in beta flight, it's motor one, two, three, four. So that is three right there. And to give you the motor as well as a ground pad, 
Awesome. I really like that. That's well thought out. We have two 5 volt pads, the buzzer ground, and the LED signal pin right there. So if you wanted to put, um, for example, an LED, obviously, RGB LED to be exact, you would put the signal on the LED right there, and the 5 volt would go there, and you'd find the ground somewhere out here. Now, let's move up. So we have RX4 and TX4, which is UART4. You could use it wherever you want. RX3 and TX3. Also, you can use them for whatever you want. They, you could put SBOS on any of these pads and it'll work. RX2, TX2, another UART, which is UART2, 4.5 volts and 3.3 volts. Now, I don't recommend you use this one. This one's kind of a weird one. I still don't understand what it really does, but it can cause fail safes on receivers. So take that into consideration and be careful of using this one for your receiver. And as you can tell right there, we have a 3.3 volt pad and a ground pad. So if you have, you know, something like a spectrum or any receiver that takes 3.3 volts or whatever, you maybe you're adding maybe a GPS or something that does that, you would set it up right there. Now here we have ground and S1. This is ground for your ESC if you wanted to ground it. And here's your motor one signal, signal one right there. So like I said, it's perfect beta flight because the arrow is here and motor one is right here. Here we have another five volt pad. Awesome. Um, that's just awesome right there to give you extra stuff. So let's flip this board around here now. We have an RSSI pad, a current pad, VCC, and ground. So VCC is the direct power coming into this uh, flight controller. So you could, you know, whatever you want, you can set up there. And here we have motors five and six. Like I'm, I was saying, if you're going to build a, a hexacopter or something, you would, there's your pads right there for that. We also have another 3.3 volt pad, a five volt ground. TX1. So see this, check this out. The 5 volt ground TX1 RX1. What I would do is I would actually set up my S bus right here or my I bus because look, look, they're just right next to each other. What you would need is the RX ground 5 volt and then you set up I bus or S bus, whatever you want. Let's flip this guy over now. Now here we have the signal 2 in ground, which is in the correct beta flight orientation. But since we switched the board over, it doesn't seem like it, but it is. Now we have our camera. This is the yellow line for your camera it would go right here. Five volt ground. This is how you power up your camera. All perfect, simple, done. Now the VTX, I wish they added a VCC pad next to the VTX, but they did not. So what you would have to do is put the yellow wire on the VTX pad right here. And then the ground pad is obviously ground for your VTX. I do highly recommend you ground it here. And the positive, you're going to have to take it all the way from your battery or a 12 volt regulator if you have a PDB connected. So yeah, take that into consideration. The power from the VTX will not be taken from here, but you could possibly use that VCC pad there, but I'm not sure. And you know, you could possibly get away with it. Just double check with your multimeter. And here we have RX6 and TX6, which is another UART. And what do we have here? We have another ground and motor four. So it's just, it's pretty awesome. Um, very simple and uh, very efficient and very well thought out. That's all I can say so far about this until we build it. The pads are very good sized here and uh, the quality obviously seems spot on. It's Maytech, what do you expect? If you have any issues, just write them an email, they will fix it right up for you. All right, so as you can tell here, we have a boot button. So just in case if we brick it, you could just hold it before plugging in your USB and then you could just go ahead and flash it. And let's just take a look here. Do we have anything else? Not really, there's our USB. Let's flip this board over now. So here we have a micro uh, SD expansion, which is super awesome. So if you were you want to do some black box logs because you're having some issues, this is very good because don't forget this is a sensitive gyro. So you might need it. Hopefully no one will ever need it, but it's there. And it's very nice to see. And here we have our connector for our PDB, the, the Maytech PDB to be exact. Now, this Maytech PDB is the, uh, um, you know, the PDB with the ribbon cables. And they do provide you actually, I didn't order this with the PDB and they gave me two ribbon cables in the package, which is very nice and very well thought out also. And they also provided us, which is a very necessary piece, which are these rubber, you know, standoff dampener thingies. You're going to need these. You are going to need these. I don't care who you are. You're going to need some kind of dampening. So this is very nice. This is very good that they actually provided this. And overall, you know, we do have a couple more pads here. We have motors one through four again, ground and a five volt. That's very nice. And here, if you wanted to connect your uh, GPS or whatever, you can go ahead and set that up right there. And overall, you know, I'm actually going to be building this one with a GPS, I believe. 
um, very soon on the channel because I did purchase a GPS and I really want to get into kind of a long range kind of thing going on. And uh, what I'm doing right now is I'm actually creating seven inch arms for the frog. And uh, so we can set that up. And I'm also creating a new bottom plate for the turret. And uh, I'm designing it right now. And I'll be seeing seeing it very soon on the channel. And if anyone wants, you know, wants one of those, you know, the, the seven inch arms or six inch arms for the frog, uh, let me know or email me. And also the bottom plate, which will actually for the turret 130. But we'll get into that actually later in another video. Let me know what you guys think at the bottom section in the comment section down below. Overall, you know, the, this flight controller seems good. Uh, the specs are very, very nice. Uh, however, we have to set this up, like I mentioned, make sure you set it up on a clean build, like some nice quality, good, you know, good ESCs, not super noisy, and probably stick one fat low ESR capacitor on the power rails, and you should be fine. Now, I would go ahead and, for example, what would I set this up with? I would go ahead and stick possibly a Dell RC, uh, the Dell RC engine. ESC 4 in 1 ESC or Tico 32 ESCs or the Tico 32 4 in 1 ESC and what else tested good? I don't really remember right now. But those tested very good and those, you know, I could put them in without worrying too much. You know, I could, I could just be totally happy with it because I've already tested these on, on sensitive gyros and they outperform. And not only that, we've only tested those on bench testing and on real world testing and they perform spectacular. Those three ESCs perform spectacular. I'll leave a link to them down below as well as this Matic flight controller. I really like this for some reason. I have, you know, I just, I don't know. I just really like it. Maybe because it's the speed, but even then, uh, this is going to be our future very soon. So soon, sooner or later, we're going to be switching it. Maybe three months six months time we're all going to be on f7 flight controllers possibly and uh, a lot more features will be coming out by then and well that's going to conclude it for this video guys i really hope you guys enjoyed it and if you guys have any questions or any suggestions feel free to let me know and consider joining my mission join my patreon help me document and test everything i possibly could you could also use the affiliate links down there they do greatly support the channel and that's it guys i want to thank you for everything we just hit like 12.5k subs the other day and this is just amazing and uh, I love each and every one of you and I'm sorry I haven't been getting back to a lot of people's emails. I have been bombarded with emails. I'm just trying to go through them one by one so I don't miss anyone and that's it guys. So I really hope you guys enjoyed the video and I uh, will see you next time. See you guys. Take care.